Hello, I'm Alice Gray and welcome to Inside the Petri Dish, the podcast that dissects science and takes a look down the microscope at controversial topics within research. In this episode of Inside the Petri Dish, we're going to be continuing our journey looking at climate change. Last week, I was joined by environmental scientist and one of my personal Instagram inspirations, the blonde biologist, or properly known as Rachel, where we explored climate change and its consequences. In this episode, I am joined by Adriana Coppola, an industrial and renewable energy engineer, to talk about her work to better source environmentally friendly fuel. So I'm joined by industrial and renewable energy engineer Adriana Coppola during Inside the Petri Dish, we're looking at climate change and an obvious way of addressing this issue is through utilising more renewable energy sources. So can you tell us a little bit about your work? Yes, so I am doing the research now on the use of certain metals in renewable energy systems, specifically in photovoltaics. Photovoltaics is the technology that is allowing us to take energy from the sun and produce electricity. So in these uh, photovoltaic systems, there are certain metals, I just, as I just said, for example, silver, that it's the metal that I'm focusing on, and how much of this silver could be recovered in the future for the photovoltaics. Um, every day, this technology requires less of this metal, but the volume will be increasing in the future, as we have been seeing the last few years, and the number is expected to raise up. So how this utilization of metals or critical raw materials will affect us in the future. So last week you were at a climate change conference. Could you give us a little bit of background about what it was about and um, tell us a little bit about some of the discussions that were going on there? Yes, so during the last uh, couple of weeks I was in Bonn in Germany representing Costa Rica with the Costa Rican government delegation. Um, And in this conference about climate change, pretty much every country in the world was represented. And we were discussing about how to start working under the Paris Agreement. So how the countries will reduce its emissions, how is it going to be the situation with the financing of these projects, of these uh, views. which technologies do we need to encourage more and more to achieve the Paris Agreement goals? And there was a very nice and important topic, actually, too, uh, regarding gender responsive technology and gender responsive policies regarding climate change and indigenous knowledge and indigenous uh, communities as well. That's really interesting. So what are the gender the gender policy gaps that we see in climate change? So climate change will affect the whole of the humanity, of course, but because of the vulnerabilities of women around the world would affect us more. So, for example, the women tend to take care of others even more than men. For example, taking care of children, taking care of elderly and sick people in the family. So when we have uh, more dramatic natural disasters, for example, women tend to stay at home with their families and they are likely to die more or be injured more than men. Um, They also have to face challenges regarding, for example, the consumption or the use of fuel to cook, for example. So every time it will be more and more difficult for these women to find wood. They have to find the wood and they have to cook and the energy issue comes into the game because the women are the managers of the energy in the households and they have more um, problems respiratory problems even they are likely to die because of the uh, problems in their lungs because they are cooking with non-efficient stoves for example so there is a whole range of actions of policies and of issues that it has to be considered when we talk about gender and climate change. 
That's really interesting because there's a lot of sociological and economic issues tied in with um, non-renewable and renewable energy. So a gender gap is really interesting. And another thing you mentioned was the, the Paris uh, Climate Agreement. And obviously America has uh, pulled out of this agreement and is, I think, the only country not to be part of this. So with America having such a large economy and manufacturing industry, what do you think the consequences of this could be? This has been really interesting in my view. Uh, this year we had the very good news that uh, Syria and Nicaragua are joining the Paris Agreement. So currently the only country that is not in it's the United States. But it has been very curious to see how the photovoltaic installations, the solar energy, has been increasing a lot in the US since Donald Trump was elected. So um, it, it really, it may be my theory is that people are more aware now that they have to fight against the new policy, but they are actually taking actions. For example, there are certain cities in the United States who were represented in the Conference of the Parties of Climate Change last week as a non-official uh, delegation, and they declared that they wanted their states to go 100% renewables, to go climate-friendly, environmental-friendly. So people are raising awareness and they are realizing that they cannot rely just on Donald Trump's government to take action. So as policymakers seem to be letting us down in terms of renewable energy, the people in the general public are taking this into our own hands. As we're on that topic, what can we do in our daily lives to limit our use of non-renewable energies and to help address this issue of climate change? So we have been listening a lot to reduce the use of energy, but it's quite difficult sometimes to translate it into daily life things. So for example, by not using the car so much, taking the public transportation options that you have. Also, for example, if you want to cut the grass in your tree, in your garden, sorry, you might want to use your force instead of machines that will require petrol or diesel, for example. If you can, you can just go for electric mobility, so there are certain things that are not that big that you can just replace in your life. You don't have to change your lifestyle. Uh, go for more efficient uh, devices, more efficient, um, for example, washing machines in the house. So just to reduce the use of the things that you need and that will make a quite a difference. Of course, if it's in your hands, you can invest in renewable energy, for example, installing photovoltaic systems in your house, and that will also encourage the rest of the people around you to go more green and more renewable. So small changes can make a difference because, I mean, a lot of the time people think, oh, we need to get um, solar panels put up on our, on our roof and things, and although that is great, um, they are still fairly expensive, although the prices have dropped. So, you know, that's quite isolating to, to sort of uh, working class communities. So something like looking at your washing machine next time you need to buy one and making sure that it's um, more efficient. That's a really um, great way of contributing. Uh, and what really strikes me um, about what you were saying during the discussion about uh, gender equality in the argument about climate change is also the health aspects. So you were talking about how women, they're more exposed to um, these uh, fossil fuels and carbon dioxide emissions and things. And, and recently we've seen research that shows that you know, regular interaction with pollution can increase um, your chances of developing a whole host of different illnesses from anything from respiratory conditions to even increasing your chance of developing dementia. In terms of using fossil fuels at home, uh, would an electric hob be better for you or would something like a, a gas hob 
be okay or are we just simply looking at um, wood burning fires in, in the home? So there are different options, of course. Um, for example, I can go to Africa, certain countries in Africa, they rely pretty much on burning wood to cook. So it's not a matter of replacing completely this kind of uh, lifestyle, but just with the simple changes in the design of these cook stoves, this uh, pollution and these issues will be reduce, reduced pretty much uh, until the point that it's not harmful to the health anymore. So it's not really rocket science sometimes, it's just very few things that can make a difference. Of course, if you can replace everything into electricity and this electricity is coming from renewable energy, that will be the best of the cases. But we have to keep in mind, as, as you just mentioned, that not everyone could afford this right away. So every step will bring us to more renewable energy societies, more smart societies, but we have to start with the basic things first. Definitely. And uh, there's also, you know, economic and um, job growth benefits from renewable energy, as well as helping to stabilise um, energy prices. And even as this market matures, we'll see a, a drop in energy prices. So everything is pointing to developing more renewable energy sources. That brings us to the end of the discussion. And I would just like to thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. And I'm really looking forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much, Alice. It was an incredible pleasure to have Adriana on my podcast. And stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to explore this topic further and have another amazing guest. So until next time, see you later.